Hey guys, so today we're going to talk a little bit about a subscriber question that I had this morning actually, which is great. And the question in question was, Frederick, what do you think Microsoft open sourcing most of their patterns, or at least a really large amount of them, is going to mean for us here in the IT? What's going on with that? So let's get into it. Now, for those of you who may not know it, traditionally Microsoft has been... Let's just, uh, let's call it very conservative when it comes to the open source idea and sharing patterns. And they've been very eager to keep what's theirs, theirs. That, let's just call it that. And now there's a change in, well, a, and a pretty a big change. They are, as far as I know, I think it's roughly 60,000 patterns we're talking about that they are going to share with, uh, you know, other members of uh, the Lin... Uh, I can never remember what the name is, O-I-N or O-L-N, uh, it doesn't matter. But basically, they're going towards open sourcing this. And if, because of course, only the people who are actually part of those discussions and the people who are actually part of Microsoft at that level will be able to give you a good and accurate estimation or like answer to why they do this. But I think that I, um, if I'm going into speculation mode, and this is, guys, just remember, this is just speculation. But my guess is that Microsoft has realized that they have lost quite a lot of the relevancy that you once had, not in the industry per se, but with the developers. So the way that I think about it is that the only people who care any like for any reason about what my, how Microsoft is doing are people who are already indoctrinated into their environment. In other words, unless you are a .NET developer, a C-sharp developer, or anything like that, it's very unlikely that you give a shit about what's going on with Microsoft. Well, I do use Visual Studio Code and a few, like there are tools that they have that give them some relevancy, but they are not in the same league of relevancy as say Google, who has a, an entire suite of these different, almost, everyday developer tools and they Google has put a lot a lot of energy and money into having a very strong develop like a company relationship to the developer community and I'm guessing that Microsoft is trying to get on board with that I think that they are far, finally starting to realize that there is a very big business value in having a strong presence within the developer community. The, the reason why is actually very simple. You see, it used to be the case, and this I'm guessing that they are, like this is what Oracle is doing as well. Oracle still doesn't really seem to go as far as Microsoft because, well, that's a different discussion. But you see, it used to be the case that the decision of tooling and these sorts of, like what you're going to use for the product was dictated at a board level. It was something that was business to business in a, in a broader sense. But today, in, if you want your tools to have relevancy or you as an IT company to have relevancy within the developer community or even in within companies, you have to get to the developers because it's the developers and that's the trend that we're seeing today. The developers, DevOps, all this good stuff are now in a much broader sense dictating which tool they use to produce the results that the companies want. In other words, if you want us to use your stuff, you better make sure that we like your stuff. And it used to be in, in, a very, in a very different way where the company and you know, business people made that decision for you or a CTO of some sort. Now, Microsoft is realizing this, this is my guess. And I think that they have also understood that if you want to have a good developer relationship today, you have to be an open source. You, or rather, you have to have an easy onboarding process to your tools. You have to have a very, very strong community of developers. And above all else, you need ambassadors. Now, what is an ambassador? Well, within the business world or, well, doesn't matter if it's the business world or whatever, but an ambassador, guys, is a person who is, well, basically an evangelist, somebody who is promoting openly your stuff. They really like what you do. They really like you or for whatever reason, they are willing to stick their neck out and say, this is really 
really cool. This is really awesome. You want because that's what you want. You want blo I mean, look at Go and Kubernetes, for example, like these massive super successes. Same thing with Angular back in the day. Google had. I mean, in the past five years, if you really think about it, Google has had major, major great good PR within the developer community. They have an an amazing relationship to the developers. Facebook has gotten a lot of action, like a lot of like attention as well for everything they're doing with React and so forth. And that's what I'm guessing. My guess is that Microsoft wants that too, not just for their C# -sharp developer and their .NET, like the .NETers, because they already have these guys. And I think that they want to broaden things. I think that they want to diversify a little bit and see if they can become relevant in more projects than just the thing that they kind of already already are really good at. Because that's what Facebook has, for example. React crosses all like every web project like it, it's a very diverse solution same thing with kubernetes and so forth so google has a bit of that as well and that's also why i think that they are tr like uh, they are well you may have heard that microsoft is acquiring github or rather that's a, i don't know how far the discussion has gone now but that was at least in the news for not not that long ago and i think that's very much the same thing they are trying desperately to find different ways of creating a better connection between Microsoft as a company and the developer community. That is my guess. Now, what does this mean for you and me? Well, I don't think that Microsoft will mess this up. I would be very surprised if they did, because my, my, I want to believe that this is an honest like move and that there's just you know they want to get on board with this open source thing and i also want to note something this idea of you know them giving away or open sourcing as i said right it's roughly sixty thousand patterns remember and this is true for google and the others uh, toyota and whoever like the others who are part of this that only means that things that are legally speaking they are only open sourcing things that have a Linux system relevancy or is relevant to Linux system activities. That doesn't mean that, you know, they're just giving away everything. They're just giving away, they're giving a lot of, a lot of stuff away. But the question is like, what is, the, are they actually giving away and how much, you know, how much does it impact them? That's another discussion. But at the very least, it's, I think, a very good and positive change because, um, I per this is me at the personal level. I just like the idea that these super companies who have more money than God can do something like this because I want to believe that it is possible to make, you know, enormous sums of money and still share your findings as you go along. I would like us to go in a direction where this like restriction of information isn't really useful that a collaborative discussion is much more useful. B building strong ties to other, other organizations and other people is the way to actually make a success of yourself. And in the startup world, that is also something, you know, being more of a philanthropist is getting more popular than being a classic corporation where, hey, you just try to hog everything for yourself. That's what I think, uh, that's what I like at least. I'd like to think that that's the way that these things are going. But what I think is gonna happen next is that Microsoft, and I hope this will happen because otherwise this, like, you, I mean, it could also end with a complete failure and they just spent a lot of money trying to build PR, but they can't really sustain it. They do need to overhaul quite a few things in, in, their, like, uh, in their business strategy in order for this to work. But if it does work, I think that Microsoft will have, start to kind of be able to catch up to the sort of popularity that Google and Facebook have. And I would like that because like Microsoft ha represent a really, re like they have some really good projects. Like a few, like not everything they make, I mean, nobody makes everything perfectly, but they have some really awesome things. And I would love to see, like, I, I want to encourage this behavior. I want more of these super companies to contribute to the collective tool suites that we all use and you know makes makes us productive. So what I want you to take away from this is that my guess is that Microsoft is finally realizing that being super restrictive and corporate and just having a business to business type of mindset and basically just being in it for the money is not actually the way anymore to make the most amount of money. The way to get the most amount of money or like to have a really strong business value is to build a really, a, at least in the IT world, is to build a strong relationship with the people who use your tools. Have a great day.